surprises that's it the alarmer come to your office for the sole purpose of, of twisting a knife and digging Tyler's back and that's a very apt description that's exactly what Nancy did write the story about the brutality charge against Damien but she really had no choice I did point out that Mark had been substantiated for still here I would like to attend that hearing there's no reason why you shouldn't be there Max. you were the consulting physician on the case well, that's right it gets me a front row seat then mm -hmm. I'm convinced it couldn't have been Damien, I'm sure. It was just engineered this whole thing by Eddie Moore to get back at Damien. I don't wish there was a bit of proof. Well, look, I, I don't know whether it's going to work. I have no idea how to get the victim to admit the truth. It's no guarantee of success, but I'm going to try something tomorrow at the hospital. I'm truly astonished. I simply cannot believe the paintings on these walls. Oh, what you see is only the tip of the iceberg. My father is not unbelievable work in his bedroom. His sanctum sanctorum. <laughs> Where is that? It's the only room in the house that he keeps strictly for himself. Although, I must admit, he's been kind enough to let me spend a few minutes there now and then, <laughs> if I'm very well paid. <laughs> sure. He contains his um, favorite works of art. He has a Picasso, a Vermeer, a Degliani, small Rubens. Oh, I'd love to see his private collection. I think he's in there now, but I'm sure he'd be delighted to show it. Um, maybe your sister would be interested. <laughs> She's not too busy. All right. If uh, you want to tell me, I'll have to test. You know, that's not... Uh, no, that's too obvious. Oh, well, Paris? That's a little closer. Well, give me a hint. You're a debutante. No. You're a hockey player. No. <laughs> you work in a cigar factory. You're a dancer? Yes, as a matter of fact, I used to be a dancer, but uh, I just wasn't good enough. So now you just uh, stand around a party and <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what. How about I go find my friend Gavin, and uh, you can ask him all about me. I don't believe you have a friend here. I think you just invented him to keep me away. I didn't invent him. I just can't find him. If you won't tell me about yourself, I'll tell you about me. Now, what would you like to know about me most? I'd like to know what it takes to discourage you. Major Craig, usually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my name is Chad. I'm 23 years old. I've never earned a dime in my life. How did it? I'm a student. I'm taking a postgraduate course at Marshall University, the Newell School of Art. Well, I won't be a student much longer. I graduate next month. I'll be ready to go to work, settle down, and pray. Do you like a large wedding, or should we just deal quietly away to adjust as we Well, you, uh, you do plan your future in a hurry, don't you? Well, I believe in quick decisions. And I'll have to make a 
big one next month. A strike out of my own or to go into my father's business. What business is that? It's not Monticello. Actually, I've already made my mind. I have to stay here. I decided that tonight. Really? Yes. The minute I saw you. You know, I just figured out what your business is, Chad. Oh? You're a professional flatterer. <laughs> I'm okay. Are you being serious now? If there's one thing I'm serious about, it's my painting. Oh, oh there you are. I've been looking all over for you. I've been trying to get back here to find you, too. But Grace crowded me and took me to go to your room more. It's the best painting here. Oh, uh, this is Chad. And naturally, the not so invisible man. Uh, oh, I wasn't sure you existed, even though Dodie told me you did. Well, uh, wasn't the thing you were saying? Uh, sure, but Grace introduced me to a bunch of people, and she told them I was a famous choreographer. They're all dance buffs, so they wouldn't let me get out of there. And are you a famous choreographer? No, not famous, not a choreographer, at least not mm, Take it you're in another line. Uh, no. At all, thanks. Unless you have a job. <laughs> Actually, I'm in the same boat too. I'm worse. See, I'm a painter, which is uh, no job at all. But any work sang in here? Among the Renoirs and Cezans? No, I'm afraid not. However, I do have one small painting in the end of the gallery. Well, that's very good. Well, the painting is. That's why Grace said to God. She has no taste. I. <laughs> Johnny, would you like a drink? I've noticed that you're not holding a glass. Oh, oh please, let me get both some champagne. Uh, just... Hey. Well, look who's here. Johnny Gentry and his son. <laughs> nice to meet you. I do. I'm so cute. Johnny. Hello. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, what are you guys doing here? Yeah. We were invited. What are you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, are uh, you doing any acting? Uh, Johnny, Johnny. How many friends? Yeah, what's acting? What do you call this? <laughs> you know, for a while, I thought I lost you. You can never. Bowen decided not to send the letter. You mean the letter he wrote to his wife about the divorce? It took him days to write that letter. And then he conveniently lost it when he gave it to somebody else to mail for him. You know, Dee, I still feel really guilty about that. It's probably my Missy, fault. don't feel guilty. It's not your fault. Well, obviously didn't want that letter to be sent. I offered to mail the second letter. Then he asked me to give it back to him. Dee, that is really weird. I mean, Calvin is crazy about how loves his wife, obviously. Because when it came, I didn't really make the painful decision. He just couldn't do it. I just can't believe he would do a thing like that. I, I, well, he sure is disappointed. I can tell you that. Hey, that's really a shame. You know, I thought he was a friend. You know, and then he goes and does something like this. I'll have to talk to him about that, Mitzi, about treating you so badly. Well, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't talk to him at all. I mean, I would drop him like a hot pot roast or something, you know, all over the floor. I think that's very good. Calvin had a visitor today. Stars from New York. Maybe it had something to do with it. Maybe she just reminded Calvin that he had someone loving him in New York. A wife who really cared for him deeply. Dee, what are you gonna do? Well, for starters, I'm going to take a nice long hot bath. 
Go to bed. With Calvin. Definitely not with Calvin. No, I'm... I'm what are you gonna do with Lizzie, Calvin? I don't know what I'm gonna do. You think you'll see him again? See, he's got to explain it to me. He's got to tell me in his own words what it is that he really, really feels. You know that, Tyler? I'm sorry. I know when you're in trouble, Calvin. What's going on? What, uh, would you like accounting of all the gory details? Hey, okay, I know I've been suspended from my job, but I didn't think our friendship was suspended. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a visit today from, uh, someone from New York City. Who, Star? Oh, no, no, no. This was uh, a friend of Star. You could call it that. And what did this friend of Star want with you? Oh, she just came to be helpful. She starts understudy, and she was worried about her health. Understudy? Yeah. She was worried that maybe Star is a little too healthy. Right. Anyway, she uh, came to tell me a little secret Star's been keeping. Is it still a secret? Oh, no, no. She uh, managed to let me worm it out of her. For a while. Damien starts pregnant. My wife is gonna have a baby. Mm, planning to move in, Harry? Oh, Rosie, you know I live out of my briefcase. Oh, my little, uh, closer together than either of us planned. I know this is a real kick in the head for you, Say that again. On top of everything else, I'm locked out. This just isn't your day. Look, are you sure that Samantha is trustworthy? I don't know. I mean, she says that she personally accompanied Star to the doctor. I guess she knows what's going on. Well, I don't get it. Why would Star tell Samantha and not tell you? Well, you know how she is about this show business thing. I mean, it's the most important thing in my whole life. That's why she's in New York and I'm schlepping around down here in Monticello. Possible Star doesn't want to have the baby? Oh, no, I don't know what she's thinking. Well, I know you said the job is very demanding for her. Strange. I guess that's why she didn't want me to know. She didn't want the producer to know. She figured I'd get on the phone and just insist that she just drop the whole thing and get back here. Well, I suppose Samantha would be happy to see Star. Oh, sure. She's the next logical one in line to take over the job. Well, Samantha would probably enjoy it if you called Star and said, come on home, let's raise the family. You know, about a year ago, I would say that is exactly what I would have done. No, I just don't know. Dee Dee? Uh, I was going to ask her for a divorce. And now she comes up with a baby. I mean, you know what kind of a rat I'd have to be to do that now? I just can't go through with it. No way. It's pretty scary now. I mean, being on the run and being fugitive, I mean, that everyone I see you won't feel that way when you leave the country. In fact, when we be gone, as soon as you step on board, you bet you South America. You will. Of course. Because the ocean is neutral territory. Nobody can arrest you on the ocean. And when you land, you're in a country where nobody can put you in prison. Unless, of course, you break the local laws. Oh, I never want to go to prison again. Almost anything is better than that. I know you're going to love it down there. The weather is warm, the people are friendly, and if you have money, you can live like a queen. You can have an estate up in the mountains, a condominium in town, all day sunbathing and swimming at the beach or shopping at those bad stores. You know, here they get all the latest clothes packs. And at night, these fabulous parties. And listen, listen, come on, you're going to meet a lot of Americans down there. Rich, handsome, playful <laughs> times, right? I know you're going to meet a lot of friends down there. <sighs> yes, no, I need to make new friends. None of my friends stood by me during this. Not even Geraldine. Your residence. One moment, please. Did you call Mr. Ferguson? Yes, yes, that's the man from the back of the dream. Hello, they want me here. So, you're back home, Mrs. Bennett. I thought you were on a cruise. Yes, I am back. 
Look, I'm sorry to uh, be getting a hold of you after hours, but it's very important. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Whitten. Always glad to have a good customer. What can I do for you? I am going to need some more money, um, a great deal of money tomorrow, and I just wanted to make sure that it was available. How, how much cash are we talking about? Well, how much do I have in the account? You, you couldn't possibly be thinking of withdrawing that much. Uh, Look, I mean, you're not going to go broke. You still have all my CDs. Well, that's just an awful lot of money to take out in that It's court. my money, and I can do what I want with it. Oh, well, yes, of course. And but... also, I want this to be totally confidential. Uh, perhaps if we talk this over in the morning, it would... I want my money. And if anyone finds out about it, I will never do business with your bank again. And not only that, I'm going to remove every penny and tell your superiors that it was your fault. Is that clear, Mr. Frobish? Yes, Mrs. Whitney. Perfectly clear. See, I think it's about time for us to leave. Oh, yes, I'm dying to sneak in and see that Renoir again, but I suppose <laughs> it will have to wait. Has anybody seen Gavin or Jody? I saw them a little while ago, but I don't know where they are now. Well, I suppose I'd better go look for them, then. Excuse okay. me. Well, <clears throat> what is the guy's name? I've forgotten his name already. Chad. Mm. I don't know his last name. What did you say he does? He's a painter. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Maybe he did this place. Did a good job on the ceiling. No, I mean, he's a painter painter. Actually, he's taking a postgraduate course, and he'll be graduating, I believe, yeah, in June. Did he ask you to model for him? No. Good, because it wouldn't have let you. You're jealous. Hey, uh, you got something on your lips. What? Me. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, you kids ready to blow the joint? I've had enough elegance for one night. I just want to get home, take off my shoes. You and me both. Come here. Here for most of the evening. Oh, thanks. The Endicott's wanted to make sure we saw all of the sites. Did you see the run well? Yes, I did. It was nice. Nice. Is that all you have to say about it? Nice? <laughs> well, I don't know that much about art, only when it's in motion. <laughs> well, I think I ought to talk to the art editor of the paper. I don't know if he's aware of the incredible collection there is in this house. You should, Nancy. I think it deserves a feature article. That is, if he will let you do it. Yes, I get the impression that Mr. Endicott uh, feels rather protective about his art. I'm so pleased you could all come to know. Oh, our pleasure. <laughs> I'm sorry my father isn't here. He's in the study doing business with somebody. Well, thank you for having us. We've had a wonderful evening. Good. Yes, it has been a delightful time. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I was just saying that I thought the art editor of the Monticello News might be fascinated to see your father's collection. How do you think he would feel about it? Well, uh... I think publicity is probably the last thing he would want. Uh, I'm afraid that might be the case. <laughs> Thanks so much for the evening. Yes, yes good to have you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I hope you enjoyed yourself, Miss Travis. Yes, I did. I had a very nice time. And I hope you'll think about my offer to find out more about that portrait of yours. I will. All we need to do is just have it for a few days, and then we can have someone look at it. And I think we should be able to find out about the period and the artist and... Maybe even the model. I'd love to find that out, wouldn't you? I mean, it must be an ancestor, Jody. It looks so much like you. Yeah, I would. I really would. Okay, how about uh, tomorrow? Good. Good. I'll see you then. Great. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Uh, oh, wait a second. I forgot my purse. That's okay. I'll get it. No, I, I know exactly where it is. I'll, uh, I'll meet you outside. Okay. <clears throat> you.